What is happening, y'all? Welcome back to part five of the walkthrough, moving on to the side mission of Dark Omens. So we have a couple of different, um, couple different ninja locks, omeo locks that we can get here in addition to some Kodamas. So a side mission you will definitely want to do. Now that we have access to even more goodies, Go ahead and ready up some jutsu. So we're gonna put on purification talismans. Just using these, um, along with the shurikens, just you know, more more chance to get those points. Um, there's not a ton we need in those trees, but we do want to get those points as fast as possible. Which, on that note, we're gonna use them on up. Please, sir, don't come at me. Ah, just kidding, get stuck. Ever seen a corruption weapon also imbued with purification? Now, one thing that is important to note is if you look at my weapon, it has that little bar. That's the, the sentience bar, talking about when it's going to proc up and become powerful. Um, if that bar fills up, any buff that I have on the weapon Purity, fire, lightning, doesn't matter. Any buff I have on the weapon will be overwritten immediately by the weapon getting its corruption buff. So, something important there. Uh, and if you look at my mini-map, you'll also see a little green dot. Now, that is the Kodama sensor effect we just picked up. You can find this on helms, on soul cores, or on uh, accessories. And having an accessory with it is really really nice because it's just gonna make your life so much easier and it'll make my life so much easier even with all the notes i've taken having a little thing on the mini map just to be like yo dama's right here just it, it makes it makes everyone's life better just find something that has kodama sensor trust me you'll appreciate it Anyway, uh, so we killed them up here. There is an archer. We're going to snipe his big, ugly face. Oh, my God. You just did not want to stop. Oh, no. Please don't. Please don't. Don't hurt me. Just kidding. I'm human tornado. Oh, God. No, I'm not human tornado. He almost slapped the shit out of me. <laughs> Please, I don't want to get hit with the sword. I'm just kidding. We're good now. We're good. We're good. God damn, these guys hurt. Terrifying how much damage enemies can do to you in certain cases. Well, now that he's dead, where's this asshole that was blowing the horn at? Where did you go? One thing you'll notice is as I'm fighting too, I'll quickly swap on over and look at a separate enemy. You can uh, very frequently change the direction that your abilities are going and who they're going to hit just by switching who you lock on to. So something to keep in mind as you play. And we're going to kill a couple revenants while we're here. I like how it threw the body and still deposited all the loot for me. And you also notice we're getting oh Chaco Cups. Those are what we actually use to summon up the blue revenants, which is another reason why it's important to kill these things every now and then. To be able to summon, you gotta beat up the bad guys. Damn, this one is going off. Lots of shinobis running around. Yeah. <laughs> 
God, this thing. You need to die. Ooh, and look at that. All the Ricky pieces. We're going to go put that on. I'm going to put that. Oh, it's going to make me weigh a lot more. I don't want to go and weigh that much. So you see, this is exactly why I say it's worth killing revenants. I get my stamina up a little bit more, and I have a whole fresh new set of gear. All right, uh, so we're going to grab this real fast, and then we're actually going to just sprint on past. There is a shortcut gate that we're going to unlock. So we just run, 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 run. And we'll wait for the Gaki since he's already coming. Uh, as I mentioned, we don't have immunity opening up doors in this game like we do in Dark Souls. So running past, if there's one enemy that's right there that's going to have a chance to, to get onto you, Definitely make sure you take him on out. Now, we don't need to rest yet. I feel like we're, we're doing fine on health and all that. So we're going to continue on, but we're going to grab this. And now we're going to try and do something a little bit tricky here. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm damn well going to try. So this guy is going to punch and send that boulder down. And now I'm going to do this and... Oh, almost. It almost got him. So I'm sure a lot of you saw what I was trying to do there. If I could, if you can time it right, you can essentially get the, uh, the boulder to crush the Anki for you, which is hilarious. You can see just backing up. Uh, I don't have to fight. I don't have to fight the Yankee and the Cyclop. <laughs> Cyclop. Cyclops. Jesus, what is it hard today? You don't have to fight them both at the same time. You can obviously just back up, and this dude decided to, to screw off and do his own thing. I'm going to call him back over here. The other reason we wanted to bait that is there were a bunch of Gakis, and essentially we've just had him kill our Gakis for us. Efficiency. Not that it matters because we haven't done the dojo missions yet, but we're gonna take a look at those right after this. Soul core for him, which unfortunately is kind of useless. His soul core sucks. Uh, so we're gonna take out these guys real fast. Kill the Gaki by the loot, loot up, right, then kill Anki, dispatch the three enemies. So we got rid of the boulder already. I don't know how this little thing survived the boulder, but it's dead. There's one throwing a bomb up there. I'll just uh, I'll throw that out and then grab this. And we got our next Kodama over here. Head on over this way. Um, we got a couple humans waiting up top and some mage locks. I'll pop you off. Grab these. It's another Omeo skill point. Move that guy and get our little fluffy kitty in the corner. All right, um, scamp is in the pots. Okay, so we're gonna do Odachi guy next, and then we have a dark realm that we're gonna clear. guy over here. He's trying to capture and kill that Kodama probably. 
No one will hurt the little Kodamas. Right, now let's see if we can lure this guy over this way. I don't know if he's going to come over here. Probably not. That's fine. We can drop down. There's the ninja locks. Dead, we have now cleared the dark realm. So we can kill off these two idiots now that they have no key. You can see they can't still generate clouds and get their own key back, but it doesn't matter. We've already killed the uh the Yoki, so we're nice and things are easy. Now there's a shrine right there before that. Kill this guy. And grab this piece of loot in the corner. And if you take this path on down, this is going to lead us right back to where we just fought all those uh, all those dudes earlier. So there's no other loot over there, um, but just to give an idea of the level. You could come through here and try to fight that way, but going around the back and taking out those enemies just makes things uh, just a better approach, in my opinion. All right, new shifting skills. Great. Uh, we're going to level up our stam even more. Can I fit it in? I cannot. What about here? Damn. This stuff is just, it's too thick. It's just too damn heavy for me. That's okay. Let's take a look at our weapons. Sort by level. This is still our highest, so we're good on that front. Um, we're going to spend some skills. Samurai, we will pick up Running Water Earth. So now we can dodge in all the stances. Uh, and we're going to work our way towards Barrier Talisman. Barrier Talisman is super, super useful. Um, I would use it on pretty much every build. Uh, it's just going to give you a shit ton of key. Can't go wrong with it. Um, and we need to work our way towards battle focus, so we will pick up Adamantine. We're not going to actually use that ability. And over in Ninja, we're going to pick up Tiger Running for now. Which I'm actually going to put that on. It's not going to give us a ton of points, um, but it's... I don't know. I'm tired of throwing shurikens around. There's not a lot of ninja skills we need anyway, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, and tiger running is just a really, really nice ability. It's going to allow you to progress so much faster through some of these levels. Like this. Look at us. Now we're just like, do, 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 do. Excuse me, out of my way, sir. I'm on my way to the boss. So this fight is going to be a Tengu. I'd suggest popping your sacred water and then getting on in there. The weapon is not close to corruption, so we will put this on. Oh god, and that's 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 a Tengu for you. Yeah, they are uh they're not nice. They're not nice, they hurt a lot. But we have this, so you know, no problem. Just run back up. I mean, that's the thing. Like, honestly, I don't even want to imagine the type of insanity you have to have to try and do a no-death run of Neo. It's, I'm not that insane. I like the game, but I'm not that crazy. Pop this. We're going to be a little bit more careful this time. See, now he messed up. He done goofed. See, that's the duality of the game. Sometimes you get hit twice and a Tengu murders you. Other times you just pop him in the face and he dies and that's that. I had to wave the purity off. So, with this knocked on out, we're going to do a voice in Twilight. Now, a voice in Twilight is essentially just going to be a battle side mission. Uh, this is the perfect example of a side mission I talked about where I was like, you know, some of these we're just going to burn on through them. Uh, it's essentially going to be a three-phase encounter. Uh, at the very end is a Mizuki boss. It's that, that cow demon we fought in the first level. 
but you can get a pretty good soul core. I actually like the Mizuki soul core. It's a nice charging ability. Sliding right past this, trying to go here and get my shrine up and level up. Keep building that up. So we're going to go and uh, knock that out real fast. Now for these ones, I think it's 100% worthwhile bringing along a blue. Um, they're just they're just pain in the ass missions, you know, because it's essentially a gauntlet where you're going to be fighting a bunch of enemies at the same time. And uh, to that extent, having a blue can help. And I don't see any blues around, which is a pity, so it looks like we're going in solo. So talk to the cat. He's like, what is happening? Something's weird. You can see just how easily purity is allowing me to shred through yokai. Just bottoms out their key, and then after that, you can just murder. Uh, also, you'll notice that we just gain proficiency with Omeo magic, and that's because we are using, uh, doing damage while we are buffed with Omeo. Unfortunately, we lost our purity when we attacked those fireheads, but that's okay. Come here, big cow. So, we're going to teach you guys about Confusion now. Now, Confusion is a really strong debuff if you can get it up on a target. To get Confusion up, you need to inflict a target with two separate uh, different elemental things. Whether that's going to be lightning and fire or water or... Never mind, my lightning already ran off, so I can't. Well, we're just going to put on Purity then. Sit down, big boy. But essentially, if you get water and then either lightning, purity, corruption, fire, if you get any of that stuff on the target, you can afflict what's known as chaos. When chaos goes up on a target, they will take more damage. They're going to have a lot of trouble uh, regenerating key, and it's just going to be even easier to kill them. But it only lasts for roughly 10 seconds or so. Really? You're not even going to drop your soul core? You cheap son of a bitch well great thing about this is obviously it's a fast mission you know the point is the boss is right there so if you want his soul core you can jump straight back in spank him again do it as many times as it takes get a couple soul cores level it on up if you want uh, when it comes to fusing soul cores you can only fuse two of the same type of soul core so you can't like take a Yoki and use it to level up an Enki. You level up Enkis with Enkis and Gokis with Gokis and etc. So when it comes to leveling up boss soul cores like his, for example, the only way to do that is going to be murdering a bunch of times to level it on up, which on the note, we haven't done that in a while. So we'll go over to manage soul core here and we are going to fuse some stuff on up here. So we had this Enki. Uh, we're going to sort by type just to see all the Enkis I have. And this is still... Ooh, so here. This one has a attack inheritable. So what I can do is I'll take this guy. I can hit Y to select both. And you can see I'll move the attack over to my current Anki. So now my, this Anki is up to level 8. It has the attack and the item drop rate and critical yokai shift. Um, as for the Yokis here, this one has an inheritable. So I'm going to move it over to this guy. Put that up to 5. And we'll lock you for now. We'll lock our only Gaki. We'll lock you. You Punditaras doesn't matter since neither of them have inheritables. So I'll just eat this one. And the thing is, when you start leveling a soul core, that rank that you see, that rank is always going to be there. So if I were to get a, let's say I had a level 13 E Punditara and it was at soul core rank nine, it was maxed out almost how this, this Anki is and I have a level 160 that drops. If the 160 eats the 14, that's Soul Core rank 9, the level 161 will go up to Soul Core rank 9. So 
it's always important to keep at least one soul core of every type. And then that way, if you find one that you really like and you've been gobbling them up, you can instantly boost your soul core up. So even if it's something you don't think you're going to use, you know, I would never use a, a Tengu with this build because I'm not using Omeo. I'm still going to keep it. I'm still going to level it on up in the event that I decide I want to use it for some weird, obscure reason. Um, besides that, if you really don't want stuff, just go to resting rights. I mean, I'm, I, to be honest, I am never going to use that. I'm never going to use the one I'd only. Ooh, this one he has Kodama sensor on him. That's nice. Uh, but I already know stuff that I have no interest in using, and it's all of those. So, actually, the anima charge on on Gaki is not too bad, but that's beyond the point. I'm gonna break them on down. Uh, when you break them down, you can get rare materials, and if you're lucky, you get enough points to pick up some shifting stuff. Anyway, over in Omeo Magic, Barrier Talisman saves lives. Now, beyond that, um, since we unlocked Dojo Missions, we are going to do our first Dojo Mission, Way of the Warrior Novice. This isn't a hard mission, but getting this done is going to open up more skills in the skill tree for us. So we're going to go in and knock this out real fast. Now, this mission will uh, basically, oh, as you can see kind of here, it's going to strip you of your gear. You're going to have a wooden sword. And these will kind of teach you the basics of playing the game. So in this case, it gives you a swordsman lock. It wants you to go in under katana and pick up sword key. And then it wants you to go to uh, skill customization. Instead of sword of meditation, put on sword key. So it's essentially teaching you how to pick what skills you have on. And then it's going to summon up some basic bitch enemies. And while this one was stupid easy, these will scale up. You know, the higher level ones, eventually you're going to fight this guy in a one-on-one -on -one fight, and he's flipping all over the place and doing all these abilities. So they can get difficult, uh, especially, I think, the, the Omeo ones. I always found those to be the hardest. The ninja ones are, are all right. Depends how much you have invested in decks. Um, but these missions are also locked behind proficiency. So if you don't use Omeo at all, you'll never be able to unlock the Omeo missions and when it comes to getting a platinum trophy, at least part of getting a platinum trophy is you're going to have to complete the master mission for every single weapon for Omyo and for ninjutsu. So this walkthrough series is obviously going to guide to get you through the game. But once you get into new game plus, you're going to need to pick up other weapons and start, you know, hit the ground running if you want to get your platinum trophy. Um, you know, there's there's no guide to that. It's just you got to play with them and level them up. Uh, so now that we have our base skills with running water in each tree, we're going to pick up Flux. Now, Flux essentially allows you to get bonus key when you swap to a different stance. So if I key pulse and I'm in high stance and I key pulse into mid stance, my key will actually go up higher. And when you get good at doing this, this is what's going to allow you to essentially burn through all of your key, hit a key pulse, and have more key than you initially started with. So a very, very powerful mechanic. Uh, beyond that, let's level up pinch. We're gonna keep keep on uh, pumping that stamina here. I really wanna really wanna use that that full set for all the ridiculous healing it has to offer, but I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to Oh wait, no. Oh 69.2. Yes I can. So still don't have the waste, but this is a respectable waste. I can I can work with this waste. It's okay. It's level 14 anyway, it's a solid pick. Uh, so beyond that, let me see. Did we get new things here? Another Abacus. Don't need that. Uh, you can change the stats on all of your gear, on your uh, accessories, on your weapon, all that stuff at the blacksmith. Okay. But I am good with all the stuff I have right now. Actually, let me just check that. That axe we just picked up real fast. There's a level 16 axe, and you are level 16. So no, we are good. I'm going to go to all items just to make sure I'll sort by level. Uh, wow, these are actually really good. Level 22 in corruption, but I'm not using Tomfas at all, so. Uh, yep, let's break it all down. Let's break it all down, turn it into mats, and be on our way. So we're going to wrap this episode up here, having knocked out the side missions. Up next, we have the Viper Sanctum, which if you played the uh, original Neo, there was a mission where you fought this crazy paralyzed lady. And I think that was kind of the, the get good point for a lot of people. The Viper Sanctum is kind of the get good point for this game. The boss is definitely not a pushover. And I think one that quite a few people tend to struggle with. So make sure to stay tuned and we will catch you guys soon enough when we tackle that.